morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you're well today, hope you're doing well in your world. Hello, welcome to the first episode of probably it will be about a trillion episodes of how to play like Rory Gallagher, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only. There will never be another Rory. He's just just unreal. The man is unreal. Okay, so first lesson today, just an introductory lesson. Like I said, there is going to be so many of these because Rory, it, trying to understand Rory's playing is, is like diving into a rabbit hole. It's not it's not as simple as kind of like, you know, learn this, learn this, and learn this, and you're there. It's really, it's learn A to Z, and then start, you know, learn a bit more, basically. It, it's, it's mad. It really is mad. There's a lot to learn with Rory. So, I say, there's going to be many, many, many lessons on Rory. This isn't going to be the one and only. This is just an introduction as well. So, uh, so get prepared, everybody. There's going to be a lot of these. So, um, I just want to do it justice. Being a massive Rory fanatic, I want to do him justice. I want to do it well. And the only way I can do that is be as being kind of long-winded with it as I can. And really getting every little minute detail there is to kind of like to do about Rory. So as I say, this is an introductory lesson today. Um, I've got a little list. Um, what I want to kind of talk about today is stuff like, uh, well, I want to kind of touch on everything, but I don't want to go heavily into detail as I'll do that further down the line in, in you know, in, in, in subsequent videos. But I want to talk about today, like stuff like Rory's technique. I want to talk about his tone. I want to talk about different styles, talk about his gear, talking about slide. Um, talking about his acoustic playing, hybrid picking, tapping, you know, um, how his guitar was wired, Rory tricks, Rory isms, as I like to call, uh, and feel. So that, that's kind of what, what I kind of talk, uh, touch on today. I'm not going to go heavily into these things. I just want to kind of like touch on them, so to say, uh, to give you something to kind of like go away and, 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 and to kind of like, you know, mess around with, so to say. So first thing I want to talk about is Rory's tone. So um, let's start there. We'll talk about Rory's tone and how it changed and how to kind of get his tone and what I use to kind of like to, to get as close as I can to his tone. Because we're never going to sound 100% like Rory, but we can approximate. Okay, so let's talk about Rory's tone first and then we'll start talking about, you know, a little bit about techniques and, and stuff like that. So let's talk about his tone first and how to kind of, what you want to be going for with your round. Okie okay, dokie, okay. so uh, first thing first, let's talk about Rory's tone and kind of what the, the sound you want to be kind of going for, so to say. So, uh, first thing I would say um, is the most important thing on Rory's tone uh, is a Strat-esque guitar. You need a guitar with three single coil pickups. Uh, it won't work, a Les Paul won't do it, and any guitar with P90s won't do it, and a Telecaster won't do that classic Rory tone, it's a Stratocaster and you need the free pickups uh, because you need position two. More than any position on the guitar, you kind of need that position two. You need bridge and middle pickup because Rory is a big user of position two. Not so much in the early days, like taste and stuff like that. That's mainly kind of like bridge, middle or neck. But the, the, the sound you hear him a lot, hearing him use a lot live and in studio, uh, depending on if he's using his Strat in the studio, because we had a lots of strange guitars. Um, the sound is the bridge and the middle pickup. It's that position two on a Strat, or say any guitar with three single chord pickups. It doesn't have to be a Strat as long as it's got three single chord pickups, and you can get position, uh, you can get middle and bridge. You'll be away. And it's just that real classic kind of you know, million miles away kind of tone. And it, it, you know, the sound you'll be going for wants to be quite dynamic to your playing. And you will be using your volume a lot. And I'll talk a bit more about this in a sec. But that, that, that position too gives you that real... You know, and if you crank it up, you get like a shin kicker, uh, shin kicker kind of sound. So that's the kind of sound you want to be going for. Um, and I say Rory uses his tone loads. And in position two, you can use your tone even if, you know, 
just regardless of kind of like you know if you if your tone's wired to your bridge pickup you can use it regardless so you can do all those kind of really cool um you know rory wah wahs but i'll talk about a bit more about that later on uh, when i talk start talking about techniques and stuff so uh, back to tone so that's the kind of sound you want to be going for um amp wise well what i use i use my mg uh, on the OD1 setting, and I use a uh, treble booster, um, Hubcap John's Range Master treble booster I use, and a treble booster is, is kind of key to Rory's tone. There's something that a treble booster gives you that is distinctively Rory Gallagher-ish, because you know it's the big user of the uh, Dallas Range Master. Um, but you can get close without it. So this is with. So uh, say for instance, like you know, doing something like. <laughs> So that's with it, but if I crank up the gain on the uh, the Marshall, it give you. Oop, mid back. Where are we going? You know, you can get close without it, but. Um, a range master makes your guitar clean up in a certain way, but it just sounds like Rory, especially in position two. You know, it gives you that ability to just kind of do everything from your guitar, which Rory was a kind of a, a big uh, exponent of. Um, he didn't start using pedals on the floor until, you know, the 80s. Um, you know, if, if he did have pedals, though, some, no, mo, mo, mainly on top of his amp, he didn't touch them unless he needed them. They weren't in the front of him. And I remember hearing him saying, like, he didn't like pedals at his feet because they kind of got in the way of him performing. So he would try to keep them out of the way. But anyway, that's back to tone. I'm digressing. I'm, I do apologise, everybody. But so much to talk about is trying to condense it is difficult. Yeah, I, I could literally talk for hours, and I will if I'm not careful. So I've got to be careful. Okay, so, yeah. So, uh... That's what I use. I tend to use my MG. Uh, the Orange does it as well, but I prefer the, the sound of a Marshall just gets closer to, to Rory for some reason. I don't know why. It, it just sounds closer to Rory to me. And I say, especially using a treble booster as well. Uh, this is the amp without. So you can hear it's, it, it, that position too is, is immediately kind of like Rory is. But you, cr you put the, uh, the treble booster in, it just immediately can. The guitar starts to react like Rory's reacted. So uh, it's really cool. And I say you can do everything from your guitar then as well, just on your volume and your tones. So, um, yes, position two. Those pickups, the sound you want to be going for is a kind of a mid-range, mid kind of focus, bright kind of sound, but not overly bright. Without a treble booster, you want quite a bit of gain. And you want to be able to manage that with your volume, really, more than anything. You want to be kind of... Um, you don't want to kind of go well overboard into kind of like, you know, heavy, heavy amounts of distortion, but it wants to be a fair amount because you need to be able to get those really sustainy singing lines. And when, when you start doing stuff like pinch harmonics and, and harmonic kind of like bending behind the nut and stuff like that, they want to be able to ring out and sustain it. You don't have kind of right amount of gain for that. So what I would say is experiment with your gain in position two on your strat to where it sounds right. So, so for instance, like if I flick over to OD2 on the Marshall quick, Start with a gain at two. Sounds pretty good. I'm going to put it to five. I think that's where it's going to be. Not quite. Eight. And I say that that's. That's the kind of sound you want to be going for. So just to say, you know, I've got gain at eight. I've got mids at uh, three. So it's a very kind of like bright, punchy tone, but it's got a lot of warmth for it, warmth to it. And also, having position two, you're able to roll off some of the highs with your tone control, which Roy would do. If you watch him when he's playing live, he's forever 
on his volume and his tone control and messing with his selector switch to get certain different sounds. So, you know, just be aware of that and watch him and watch how he's doing it. And again, it's just a feel thing. It's not, he would do it for this song and he would do it for that song. He would do it whenever he felt like he needed to do it. If it was a bit too brash and high-endy, he would roll the tone down just a little bit. And you see him just knocking it, little, little increments. So, um, that's the kind of sound you want to be going for. Aggressive, fat, and warm. And it's really... There's a lot of attitude to his sound. There's a lot of that... You know, you, and that, you know, it's really in your face kind of sound, but really fat and warm. So that's the kind of tone you want to be going for. Like I say, the sats... I'll just go over the setting I've got, again, at this point in time, with the troll booster, I've got gain at five, bass is on zero, middle is at three, treble and contour at zero, and volume is all the way up on ten. Without the treble booster, I have the gain on eight, bass off, mids at three, treble and contour on zero, and volume all the way up. And again, that's just kind of an idea, you know, you'll have to tweak and, you know, mess around with your amp to kind of like get it close. But I say, get position two. Don't try and get it on your bridge, neck, middle, just get into position two on those. Um, so that's the kind of sound you'll be going for. Uh, so let's talk now, let's move on, let's start talking about some kind of like Rory techniques and Rory-isms. Okay, so uh, let's start talking about Rory's technique, because Rory's technique is very much his own, and it's a very... It's a hard technique to get your head and hand around sometimes. He's very... His dexterity in his fingers is, is incredible, it really is. And he's a big user of his little finger, Rory is. Um, if you kind of take something like... Um, million miles away sometimes you kind of reach for this note you kind of you kind of get that note there you know a lot of those kind of like big stretch runs which again i'll talk about more when i start talking about theory and how that works but um technique wise rory's technique is incredible but rory would down pick a lot that's another thing to note uh, he would alternate pick, but there's a lot of down picks in Rory's playing. A lot of. <laughs> you know, that, there's a lot of that down picking going on. And it, and it gives you that aggressive, borderline pinch harmonic Rory sound. And uh, pinch harmonics is another thing I'll come on to in a minute. Oh, there's, there's so much! Oh my god, this this series is going to end me, I tell you. It, there is so much to teach, it's unreal. You, get, you start talking about one thing, and you have to start talking about another. Um, so yeah, Rory would down pick a lot. So it's quite you know, it's quite a good kind of um, practice to get into if you want to kind of play out Rory, into just down picking, not alternate. But don't, kind of like, just take like a simple kind of like, you know, Rory lick, like... Like that. And just try and down pick it. And what that is, is um, uh, on the B string, 5th and 6th fret, hammer on, to the, hammer on to the 6th fret from a B string, and then pull up, and then go to your 7th fret G string, and then back to your 5th fret B, and then end up on the 8th fret on the high E. So... the fifth fret on the high E. So that's kind of like a million miles away kind of thing. So try that out and, and just say, just down pick it. You know, and be, oh, and that's another thing. Rory was very heavy handed with his right hand. You can see he really digs in to his guitar with his, with his pick. He really, really digs in. But not enough to get pinch harmonics. He only digs in enough to get pinch harmonics when he wants. He's, he's, he's got a great kind of pressure uh, sensor in his hand. He knows what he wants and when he wants it. Otherwise, it's... it just comes out like that. So, you know, you've really got to dig in hard to get that kind of Rory tone. You know, it really kind of like that. But if you want pinch harmonics, well, I'll, I'll talk about pinch harmonics in a minute. Let's calm yourself, Dave. Calm. So try doing that little lick all down pick volume you know just try that because as I say Rory does down pick a lot and you can see it if you watch his right hand when he plays live 
a lot of down picking. He will alternate pick bits every now and again, but there's a lot of down picking going on. Okay, so um, that's kind of like one of the first things we want to talk about is that down picking and it's kind of like that. The other thing, the pinch harmonic thing is important to Rory as well. And Rory, when he wanted to get pinch harmonics, most of the time would switch down just his bridge pickup. So uh, if you kind of like take that lick, we just kind of learn, you can kind of start to like dig in a little bit more. You know, you start to get a pinch harmonic things. Um, pinch harmonics is, is, is an interesting technique to learn. It's, uh, what it is, is you're basically trapping the string on on, on the skin of your on, on your on your finger um, between the pick and your your, your, your fingers. So it's, it's this kind of like, and I actually tend to use uh, my nail on my index finger, and that's a that's a real important Rory technique. It's really hard to explain. Let's talk about pinch harmonics. <laughs> Okay, so the, plan, the plan for this video has just gone well out the window now. I did have it all planned out, but that's not working, so we'll, we'll do, I'll have to do it on the fly. But yeah, pinch harmonics is another massive Rory technique that you have to learn to kind of uh, play in that style, because Rory's a big user of pinch harmonics in certain occasions. Not all the time, but you can hear them every now and again, and some of them just absolutely scream. So yeah, and the heavy-handedness, and you know, the way he would dig in really heavy with his right hand uh, really helps to that. So like I say, what you know, what a pinch harmonic basically is, is like, you know, as you're picking the string, you start, as you pick it, the bit, the skin on your thumb here, um, actually catches the string after it's been played. So basically, the, the pick hits the string first, and then your, that part of your thumb, the side part of your thumb, hits the string, just to catch the, catch a harmonic. So, without, and then you put your put your finger on, you know, you get a harmonic. And it's a very, very hard technique to do, and Rory, to get it, digs in something rotten. So don't be afraid to lay into your guitar. You know, you really dig in to get his pinch harmonic, so don't be afraid to kind of like, you know, really go heavy handed and really start laying into the guitar. So, you know, that's what a pinch harmonic is, that's how to get it, but it will take you time if you've never done it before. Um, like I say, the pick hits it first, and then your skin on your thumb catches the string. Not enough to kill it, just enough to get that harmonic. And it does, does take time to get it, because you will, you will when you start doing it, that will start to happen, that's what happened to me. You just kill it your fingers need to learn the right amount of pressure to... And I say Rory mainly go to his bridge pickup to get pinch harmonics, but you can get them in position two. But they're not as prominent as just a bridge pickup. So, um, so bear that in mind. So yeah, what we talk about, down picks, uh, pinch harmonics, volume swells is another thing. Um, if you kind of watch Footage you've been doing like, you know, a uh, million miles away. We already do a lot of volume swells. You know, that kind of thing. And that's another technique to get into. And that's another technique to go away and play with. Um, well, uh, say volume swells, pitch harmonics. Uh, there's a lot of like little Rory tricks, but I'll, I'll, I won't talk about Roryisms at this point in time. I'll, 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 start, I'll talk about that a bit more later on at the end. So, that's a couple of Rory techniques. Like I say, there's a lot of down picks. There is alternate picks, but he down picks a lot more than he does anything else. There's a, there's a real aggressive, no-nonsense style to Rory when he plays. It's a real... You know, real aggressive, hit the guitar as hard as you can and make it do what you want it to do thing. And that, you know, that right hand comes into it. Let's talk about his left hand. There is uh, one other technique which I've overlooked, which is very stupid of me. Hybrid picking, everybody. Rory is a big user of hybrid picking. What do you mean by hybrid picking? Well, what I mean is basically Rory, Rory would hold the plectrum like that, 
but he only uses his uh, middle finger on his right hand to pick strings with as well. So you can. <laughs> Rory is a big hybrid picker, and I think that comes from like his, his folk background, but it works into that kind of that kind of rock context. So um, let's talk about hybrid picking quick before we move on to the left hand, because this is this is mega important as well. So as well as down picking strings, being heavy handed, and a pinch on my thing, hybrid picking is right up there with literally one of the most important. Well, it, it really is kind of pretty much the most important thing your right hand does to play out Rory. So hybrid picking, uh, the, 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 the little less, well, the little exercise I'm going to teach you is it. And it sounds really cool and it's got a real kind of celtic -y kind of uh, vibe that you know, Rory does. So what, what we're doing is we're picking the D string with the plectrum and then up picking with our uh, uh, middle finger and we're fretting the second uh, fret on the G string so uh, D string open and then up picking with your index finger on the G string on the second fret like that so that's hybrid picking basically so you're picking one note with a, with a plectrum picking the other with your finger and what we're doing here to get that kind of like diddly diddly diddly, that kind of roll kind of sound is as you pick this note on the G string on the second fret, as you hit it, pull off the open G string. So D string first, fret the G string. So that's, that's what hybrid picking is. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your fourth fret and doing the exact same thing. So D string first, fourth fret on the G string fretted, and then pull up. And then go to the fifth fret and do the same thing again. As, as, you know, try that out. So, so like D string, G string, D string, G string. You know, D string, D string, G string. Pull off, G string. G, yeah, that that technique, that 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 order. Sorry, and it's a really cool thing. And the more you get comfortable, the more you can kind of speed it up. You know, so you can start to kind of go, go a bit, you know mad with it so to say so that's hybrid picking and that's a really cool little um, exercise you can kind of work on to get your hybrid picking up to up to scratch and get, get getting the idea of it and what I tend to do is I tend to grow my fingernail quite long on my middle finger so it, it really catches the string and really gives it that, that you, know, you really really snap the string with it but it's all up picks you never down pick with hybrid picking you just pull the string upwards you know down picking would be where yeah down picking doesn't work so you know that that finger has that kind of claw kind of uh thing and i say start off nice and slow and i say just gradually build up the speed and just practice that but hybrid picking is key so right hand techniques we've got uh, very heavy-handed, a lot of down picks, a lot of hybrid picking, and um, you know, to, and to get those pinch harmonics, we flick down to the uh, bridge pick up and just dig in really hard. And like I say, the plectrum hits the string first, and then the side of your form hits the hits the string afterwards to get the harmonic. Okay, so um, let's talk about the left hand now. Now we've talk, we spoke about all those kind of things. Let's move on to the left hand again. Okay, okay, so uh, we talked about uh, left hand kind of thing, so hybrid picking, you know, heavy handedness, uh, pinch harmonics, down picking, stuff like that. So, uh, and I said, I've shown you some bits with left hand already, uh, you know, there's a little kind of like million miles. Yeah, you know, it's kind of million miles away kind of things. Uh, one thing I want to talk about with left hand quickly, like I said, Ro like I said, uh, Ro Rory's dexterity with his left hand was incredible, it really was. He had a lot of. Um, yeah, a lot of accuracy with his left hand. So that's that's something to kind of like go away and kind of like, you know, mess with. It's just kind of like, you know, getting really kind of like clued into, uh, you know, hitting the notes that need to be hit and really hitting them hard. 
Um, another thing where we do is left handies and, and hybrid picking is double stops, stuff like this. You know, that, that kind of thing. That happens quite a lot. He would, he would do that quite a lot. So, um, so well, this is that's the exercise I'm going to the, the little exercise I'm going to show you now. Is this? So it's not too dissimilar to the million miles away lick I, I showed you earlier on. But um, what we're doing this time is we're playing kind of like um, both strings together, so to say. So what what, what you want to be doing is what um, first finger on the fifth fret on the B string. Little finger on the eighth fret on the high E, same, same as kind of same kind of fingerings as the um, the million miles away lick. Oh, I and mean, by the way, the million miles away lick, the uh, that and this lick, they all come out of D minor, which is uh, Rory's kind of like favourite key. You use D minor a lot, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. So. Uh, yeah, so first finger must be on the fifth fret in B on the B string. Little finger eighth fret high E. And what you want to be doing is you want to be um, playing both strings together, so B and E at the same time with hybrid picking. So pick and middle finger like that. So you can hear both happen at the same time. You don't want, you know, even though you can do that in a bit, but for this moment we'll stick to just uh, both together. So that's the sound you want. And then you ought to be using your uh, middle finger to hammer on onto the sixth fret on the B string. Like that. And then pull off. So hammer on and pull off. And play every note. Don't kind of like... Um... Actually, yeah, no. Forget the hammer-ons and the pull-offs. Just kind of like just every time you can... You can do it, hammer on, pull off as well. But what I would say is... Well, try both. Yeah, try them all. Try everything. <laughs> ah, I've gone mad. I've lost my brain. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can go like that, but or you can that kind of thing as well, where you're playing both. And um, you can start to incorporate the uh, seventh fret on your G string. <laughs> So that's something to go do. And they're, they're kind of, excuse me, they're kind of Rory's double stops. There's also double stops you would do in blues kind of songs, like uh, Too Much Alcohol. Uh, no, sorry, Banker's Blues, where... You know, stuff like that. But again, I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm sorry, but I'm going to save that for the acoustic part when I start talking about Rory's acoustic playing, which won't be today, I'm sorry to say. It'll be, it'll be down the line somewhere. Okay, but I will touch on Rory's acoustic playing a bit, but not that extent. Like, Rory's acoustic playing is a whole different kettle of fish. Okay, so back to double stops. So that's, a, that's another thing Rory would do is left hand double stop. And another thing he would do is these big stretches. <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. So, um, if you take this, you know, that kind of thing, you know, you get all these kind of big Rory stretches. And I, again, I don't want to go too heavy into this kind of stuff right now. It's, there's a lot of kind of theory behind this and why it works, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the in next lesson. Um, but, um, but I will say, get ready to stretch your hand, because it will, you know, you'll... you'll your thumb will have to go behind the neck at some point to get some of these kind of Rory strap stretches, if you will. So, um, so yeah, so that's that. That's double stops. Uh, so what are we talked about? Uh, pinch harmonics, down picking, uh, volume swells. Again, volume swells I didn't really explain very well, but basically what you're doing is your volume's all the way down. You hit the note you want to hit, and then you just roll your volume in. Like that. And, and a strat is just built for you to do that. The volume control is right there, so it, it makes it really easy. So that's the volume, the volume things. So yeah, we spoke about down picking, pinch harmonics, volume swells, um, uh, hybrid picking, uh, stuff like that. Uh, let's talk about tapping. Rory was a big... He, he tapped a lot. Not to the extent of Eddie Van Halen. It, it wasn't as clean and as and as clear as Eddie Van Halen. But Rory tapped nonetheless. And um, he would do things like where he would bend the string. <laughs> and he would get the... the, 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 get, the get that kind of note. So this is a cool little technique to get into as well. So... If uh, we switch to A minor now, and um, we bend up the seventh fret, 
And then what we do is we hit, it's basically its mirror image fret, which is the uh, 19th fret on the G string. So bend up the 7th fret on the G string, and then hit the uh, 19th fret with your first finger, or your pick. Rory would use either that finger, that finger, or his plectrum to do tapping with. It, it, it was very, however, what he felt like doing at the time. So bend up 7th fret, G string, and then hammer, put your finger down on the 19th fret on the G down here. You know, you can hear him doing that a lot, like in, um, Do You Read Me, um, where he's kind of... So, um, and also he would kind of like do tapping where he'd kind of like, say we take a simple pattern like this. So that's between the 5th and the 7th fret on your G string. And you're just hammering on. Rory would just tap down here. And again, there's a lot of theory behind this, but, um, but like I said, Rory would turn his brain off to that when he was playing, but he knew what to do instinctively. But and I'll, I'll talk about more of Rory theory next uh, in the next lesson. I'll, just, I'll, I'll dedicate a whole lesson to it because I, I need to. So that's tapping. That's how we do it. Like I say, he would bend up and he would and also you know that that kind of thing. And again, I don't want to go heavily into that. And I, I don't really want to go heavily into anything right now. Just an introductory lesson. So um so tapping, hybrid picking. Uh, another thing I will mention is Rory's strat action was very very high like really high if you if you look at some pictures his strings are really high up he didn't have a low action and uh, I remember hearing him say like he hated low action guitars because there was never there was never any room for the string to move he said he kind of like stifled the guitar so uh, he had a really high action he said so when you hit like a G chord it you know it really rings out and it's got a lot of movement the string's got a lot of uh, space to move so it's not just like you know clanging into the fret so to say so that's another thing to kind of bear in mind i'm not saying go out and crank your action really high but it does need to be a certain distance sorry about that everyone we had a bit of a camera glitch there it turned itself off but like i say yeah your action doesn't want to be super super low because you won't be able to kind of like get the, the right kind of like um kind of tone, like I say, it, it, it will hinder, like having a super low action, it will kind of hinder the guitar. So it wants to be fairly high, and you also need it high for when you start to, start to do all these kind of little Rory tricks so you can grab the string. But anyway, um, so, yeah, now, so yeah, what we spoke about so far, we spoke about uh, some of his right hand techniques, his left hand techniques, his tone. Like I say, his tone is, the tone is really important. It is the same as anything, like I say, in all these kind of like sounds like this. If you don't, feel like you sound like that person you're not gonna play like them you know like i say you're never gonna be 100 percent sound like them exactly but you can always like I say you can approximate so um i say that position too is, is a real rory thing i must say a bridge pickup for a uh, bridge pickup for taste kind of like you know for for your for your um <laughs> Not me, not me troll booster. You know, and um You know, those kind of things. It, it's a real um it's really important to kind of sound the part, so to say. Okay, so uh yeah, so that's a little bit more on that. Um Yeah, we spoke about tapping, high repicking, uh high action. Um I'll talk about a couple more things in a minute. Uh, so let's talk about his slide playing quickly. Okay, so uh, Rory was an amazing slide player. Absolutely amazing. Rory was one of those... There's, there's, a, there's a video of him playing Big Guns, uh, the song Big Guns on, on YouTube somewhere. And he's playing his Music Master, his Fender Music Master, he's not playing his Strat. And um, he starts the solo normally 
like just you know without a slide and then halfway through uh, well halfway through for like the intro section he almost like changes his mind and he switches to a slide and he's playing slide in standard tuning like it's nothing so Rory is an amazing slide player and this is going to be a whole kind of mini series within a series really like Rory, how to play slide and, 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 and how Rory plays slide because it really is like you know one of those key techniques of Rory's it's the same as high repicking pinch harmonics um, you know all sorts of little, little Roryisms. Uh, slide is a massive part of Rory's playing. I mean, if you take take a song like um, Secret Agent for something like. There's a lot of um, very distinctive Rory things, like uh, you do, you know, like real cool descending kind of slide bits like that. So I'm not going to talk heavy about slide today, but slide is something we will be touching on uh, heavily at some point because uh, if you want to play that Rory, you need to be uh, able to play slide. Uh, in standard tuning as well so get ready it's a lot of fun he says but it is it so <laughs> he would do all stuff like that and he would do this thing where he would I'm digressing now but he would do this really cool thing where he would play a note and then uh, he would slide the slide all the way up and then his right hand would go up like that so he'd do <laughs> and he'd do stuff like that and it looked amazing and showy so um is there any kind of little there's nothing I can really I don't really want to teach slide right now I, I, it's a bit um and that's going a little bit too far for an instruction, I think. So I'm going to leave it out, but I just wanted to like, bring that up, but we will be covering that at some point. Stuff like Secret Agent, um, yeah, Bullfrog Blues, and all sorts of other awesome kind of Rory slide stuff. And also his acoustic slide playing, like Too Much Alcohol. So, um, and also playing lap style, because Rory, I've seen Rory play a lap, lap style kind of slide a lot. So, um, so yeah, is there anything else I've got to talk about in the introduction I, I know I want to talk about some Rory tricks like bending harmonics stuff like that in a sec uh, and I also to finish the video I want to talk about like uh, what he uses and, and, and the, you know some of the gear he, he uses it's kind of like you know and some of the eras when he used different gear so um, yeah so we spoke a bit like that technique you know down picking pinch harmonics uh, volume swells um, you know I say heavy hat Heavy handed right, uh, heavy handed right hand, but not to an extent where it's out of control and it's clunky, it still has to flow. And uh, feel is another thing I'm going to talk about in a sec. Um, we spoke about his tone, uh, slide through it, like you know, just touched on slide, not nothing major there. Um, yeah, so uh, let's talk. What can I talk about? Let's talk about the way Rory would play. And what, what do I mean by the way Rory would play? I mean, R Rory wouldn't play like pentatonic boxy, you know what I mean? He wouldn't kind of like... Oh. Yeah, he wouldn't play like up and down, so to say. He would play very kind of like up and down the neck, not that way, but that way. He would play very... You know, he'd, he'd play a lot like that. He'd play up and down the neck instead of just kind of sort of sticking to a pentatonic box. And again, I'm going to touch on this more when I start talking about theory. But to get you on the go, um, what you want to be kind of learning is your five positions of a pentatonic scale. So you want to be and you want to be learning them in a D minor or F major. Uh, if you learn your five positions uh, of your pentatonic scale from F major, D minor will be in it. And again, I don't want to talk too much about that because it'll get a bit heavy I think for an introduction so um and D minor like I say is Rory's kind of like you know major main key so to say um 
So yeah, so but but I say Rory play up and down the neck, so it's really important to understand where you are up and down the neck. Um, and again, it, this comes down to it's kind of like led, led me quite neatly into feel. Rory is a massive feel player, like Peter Green, Jimi Hendrix, John Fashanti, all these guys. They're all really feel based. They're not theory based. They know their theory and they know enough to be able to do what they want to do with the guitar but it doesn't get in the way when they're playing they just play so um and, and again that's not something i can kind of teach you that's something that will develop over time with playing and and you'll eventually de like eventually just develop this feel internally uh, I, I, it's, it's not something i can really kind of like teach um Really, it's it's just it's a person. It's too much of a personal thing, and it will happen to people in a different way. So I hope that doesn't sound like me trying to get get out of it, so to say. But um, but yeah. So um, you know that that's that's really important when playing like Rory is that is 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 to is to feel uh feel the music and, and just kind of like go with it. Don't go against it, so to say. Okay. So um, so yeah. So that's kind of like that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about today before I start talking about like you know uh, Rory's gear and, and, and stuff like that and uh, so that is some of these kind of like I'm gonna I, I always call them Rory isms um, and they're these little kind of like guitar tricks that Rory would do um, like, like like stuff like this for instance I need more gear. you know stuff like that like hitting harmonics and bending them behind a the note and also kind of like you know, stuff like that, grabbing the string and, and uh, bending it. So let's talk about them. Okay, okay, so the first one, uh, and you can do this over any Rory Gallagher song in D minor, is uh, to hit a harmonic on the fifth fret on the G string. And you kind of want to be on your bridge pickup, really. I mean, it's, uh, in all fairness, you can be on the second one. Position two. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Uh, neck pickup, position four, position three, no. Um, one is fine, two is fine, three, not fine. Four is not fine. Five is right out. Um, so yeah, position two or position one, really, on on the on your guitar, and um, hitting up the harmonic on the fifth fret on the G string. Anyway. And this is where the gain wants to be fairly high. You know, it really wants to ring out. And then what you're going to do is just basically just get two fingers behind the knot on the G string and bend it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool it's such a cool sound and Rory do that a lot in like you know stuff like Bad Penny and Million Miles Away you, you hear it all over Rory's playing and you can actually hit the 5th fret harmonic on your D and then hit the 5th fret on the G and then you know and you finish it with D so you always hear it at the end of like Bad Penny You know, stuff like that. It's amazing. And again, it's just that these are little Roryisms that are so cool. So, so, you know, you can do it on all your harmonics, really. Uh, the other little Roryism is if you're if you're kind of like doing, doing something like. What you do is he'd reach round uh, to the other side of the, the string while pressing down, and he'd pull on the string behind what you're doing. So, and it's really hard to do, but these all came from Rory not having a tremolo arm. Rory broke. It, I remember hearing Rory say he broke the tremolo arm off in the guitar, and um, he just didn't get it replaced. And he came up with all these little techniques that sound like he's got a tremolo arm. Like say the bending behind the note and the grabbing the string thing. He came up with all these little things to almost kind of simulate it. So that you know that kind of thing. That's very you know that's very kind of uh, uh, what's 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 that thing? Yeah, I mean I, I, don't, I don't remember who said it. For some reason I feel like I I, I want to say John Lennon said it, but I don't know if he did. But somebody once said that um, limitations. Uh, um, make you innovate. So your limitations or something will make you innovate it and find a way to do it. So if you don't have a delay pedal, like, you know, for instance, if you don't have a delay, delay pedal, you're kind of going... You know, 
that kind of thing. If you don't have a tremolo pedal, you can kind of... You know, you can kind of... You, you find these ways to make these effects without them. And that's what Rory did. He found ways to make tremolo effects without a tremolo arm. Because he had it just totally locked off. He didn't use his tremolo at all. And um, that's where all these things lie. But that one is the best one. So that's a really cool technique to get, like, to mess around with. I say that one works in D minor. So I say it's it's harmonic on the G string on uh, fifth fret, and then you just bend the high and the low, you know, and you just bend it as far as you want, you know, without it starting to break your fingers and just like dig into the ends. Um, and I say there's that other one as well where you just basically grab on the string. If you're kind of hammering on between the tenth and the thirteenth on your B string. You just you grab the string and, just, and pull it up and yank on it, and it, it, it just gives you that really cool Roryism. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, thing. I want to finish by talking about um, Rory's kind of gear and all the different styles he would play in. Uh, styles being the, the first thing. I'm going to talk about his gear at the end, but. I don't want to go heavy into it. That's, that's like, this is just an introductory lesson. So this isn't kind of like, you know, a whole hog or anything yet. There's going to be millions of these videos. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of all, all, all I talk about really is, is kind of like his tone. Some right hand, left hand techniques. And I say, so, show you some like sizes kind of like, you know, go away and kind of like start messing with. Like I say, five positions of a pentatonic scale cannot be understated for Rory Gallagher. You need to learn them. You need to learn your five positions of a pentatonic scale in F major and or D minor, whichever one, whichever way you see it, I would see it as D minor. Music theory would dictate it's F major, but again, I'll talk about that more in the ne in the next lesson where I can dedicate it solely to the theory behind it. And then after that, we'll start learning some songs and uh, start you know talk about guitar solos in songs and, and stuff like that. But um, but we need to get this kind of this stuff out of the way first. Okay, so um, so yeah, so that's kind of like all I talk about today. So I'm going to finish by just talking about like you know uh, Rory's different styles and the gear he used. Okay, okay. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed this introductory lesson to uh, you know the first lesson of how to play our Rory Gallagher series. Like I say, I I'm not I'm not going to teach a lot in this video, this first video, because it's only an introduction. I don't want to kind of like you know. You know, it'd be impossible to teach it all in one lesson. Rory is is just too expansive. Everything about Rory is just it's just there's too much involved. Like I said, I want to be real. I want to do him. I want to do it right. I don't want to do it just half assed or anything like that. I want to do it right. So I'd rather just be as long winded as I can be and try and get as much detail crammed in as much as I can. And I say just for an introductory thing, I just want to give you a few things to kind of go away and mess about with. And um, and then come back with uh, with 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 a, with an idea of what we're going to do in, in the next couple of lessons. Like next one's going to be kind of theory based, and then I'm going to start talking about teaching songs and and the stuff like that. Because to play like Rory, you need to learn his songs and learn his solos and understand like you know um, certain like note choices and, and and where they fall, so to say. So um, I'm going to finish up today's lesson, uh, well introductory lesson, with um, just talking Rory is a style madman. He wouldn't just play rock, he wouldn't just play blues. That wasn't enough for Rory, he had to do everything. So if you look at Rory's back catalog, you've got, you've got rock, you've got blues, you've got um, kind of some punky stuff to an extent, you've also got kind of like jazz, you've got R&B, you've got country, rockabilly, you've got folk, you've got everything. Rory is an absolute musical chameleon. He just puts, he can just put himself to any style, and he did. And he just literally wrote anything he wanted. And if the song came out in a country way, he'd play it that way. If he played in a blues way, if the song was a bluesy thing, he'd play it bluesy. If it was rocky, he'd play it rocky. And I've love, always loved that about Rory. He was never, he was never tied down. And he, he, was, he, was, he would be damned if anybody was going to tell him that he couldn't do something. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you if you listen to something like Edged in Blue, that song could have been massive. For Rory, and I think it was going to be. They wanted to release um, "Edged in Blue" as a single, but Rory wouldn't have it. He was like, "Nope, I'm an album person. I don't do singles." He never, he didn't release singles. And I, you've got to respect him. You've got to respect Rory for his his staying so true to himself. It, it's just you just don't get that so much anymore. That, that really, that in, Rory's integrity is unreal, and I respect him so much for that. It's like 
he would do what he wanted to do and be damned if anybody told him otherwise. Like, nope. Oh, I think we should do this. Nope, don't want to do that. If you didn't want to do it, you wouldn't get him to do it, which is, you know, and, you know, you could say he's stubborn and this, that, and the other, but it's, I don't think it is that. I think he's, it, he knew what he wanted and he knew what he wanted to do and he's, it was all integrity at the end of the day. It was just incredible. You don't really see that anymore. It's it, it's it's really cool. Um, so, um, so I respect him for that no end and I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just love him out. I really do. Um, let's talk about Rory's gear. Like I say, Rory's... Rory's main gear was his 61 Strat. He went nowhere without his 61 Strat. It, it, that was him. That guitar... It, it, it's so... It, it's, it's as... I like that, that, that Strat with Rory is as iconic as Jimi Hendrix's white Woodstock Strat. Or Eric Clapton's 335. Or, or, or Jimmy Page's Les Pauls. Or Peter Green's Les Pauls and Gary Moore's Les Paul. You know... It, it, that strat is so iconic and it and just the look of it says everything about Rory that 61 strat was is was and is Rory Gallagher you know as much as Rory was you know him and that guitar they were always one so to say and I'm, I'm going to be might get a bit soppy with that but you know what I mean they, they were just they were they were together from one end to the other you know, right till the end, and it's, it's, it's so sad that, like, you know, somebody like Rory, you know, but he's no longer here to play it, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking, but that was his main guitar, you know, his 61 Strat, which is why it's so important to have a, you know, a Strat style guitar, really, anything with three single coil pickups is the key, and I say it have to be single coils as well, Rory was a big single coil pickup guy, he really loved his single coils, and he just boosted them with his uh, Range Master treble booster. Again, that's another key piece of equipment is a treble booster, uh, especially early Rory. Um, he did have other guitars. He had a Gretsch Corvette, which was which was mainly used for Bullfrog Blues and, and open tuning. Uh, Telecasters. He loved Telecasters. He had an Esquire and just a standard Telecaster, mainly for slide though. Telecasters. He he liked Telecasters for slide, although he could play slide on anything. The man was incredible. Uh, National Acoustic, Martin Acoustics. Um, Rory, had a, a, Rory had a lot of oddball guitars. You see them with kind of like Airline and, and, and all sorts of other kind of guitars. Um, and then like amp-wise, his favourite amp in the world was AC30. He loved the Vox AC30. That, that, was, that, that was his kind of like, that was his amp, so to say. You know, his, the 61 Strat, a Range Master and an AC30 would have done Rory his entire life. It really, I think it would have. I mean, that, that that's that's kind of quintessentially his setup. Um, he did use Marshall though. He used um, other than Vox. He did use Fender for a, a long time, especially with, with the Lou Martin kind of years, the, the four piece with Rod DF and, and Lou Martin um, when they were in the band. They he used Fender amps a lot. There he had a basement, and uh, I think I've seen him with a twin. And he also had a Fender concert. Um, and he would, he would boost them with the Range Master as well. And that was when Rory's tone changed. Like, he, during the Taste era, he had his AC-30 and his Range Master, and his tone was very big because they, they were just a trio. And then uh, for, the first, for the first Soul album, it was the same kind of thing. It was a fairly biggish kind of tone. But when Lou Martin came in, his tone kind of thinned out and got a bit brighter and thinner because uh, I'm, I'm guessing that sound wouldn't... Uh, his bigger Vox AC-30 sound maybe clashed with the keyboard and he wanted to give the keyboard space, so he just kind of, um, he thinned out his sound and found a different space sonically to, to, to live, so to say. So if you look at Irish Tour and some of the, the I say the Lou Martin kind of like keyboard kind of years, he, his, his tone's a lot kind of brighter and it's mainly because he's using Fender amps. And then when he kind of switched to like back to a free piece with like Ted McKenna, uh, which is my favorite era, he started using stuff like Ampeg, Marshall, Me Mesa Boogie, uh, back to the AC 30s, um, all sorts, all sorts of stuff. Um, his final setup in his final years was really nice. I really liked his sound, like 90, 92 to 94 was a really nice sound where he had like a, a Marshall Master Volume, uh, a Marshall JMP uh, 50 watt combo, and his Vox AC 30, and it was running all free. That was a really nice, really nice sound he had there, and he had some pedals by that point. But, like I say, Rory wasn't a big pedal guy. The pedals he had would mainly live on his amp. It wasn't until the 80s where he started to have pedals at his feet. 
and he had like an octave divider and a tube screamer and a boss overdrive uh, he also um one of the pedals get, that, that I think gets overlooked in Roy's arsenal was the uh, what's it called, the boss the boss driver. It was a funny, funny looking pedal. It had a graphic EQ on it, and uh, you can see this on Rory's amp. It sits on top of his Marshall or his Vox or whatever amp he had at the time, and um, he used that a lot. It was called a boss driver. It was a big pedal. And um, he used that a lot, and I think it has kind of like his main distortions have for a long time. And, and there is a quote from Rory saying that was like the first effects pedal he used. Um, I'm not so sure about it was, but uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, you know, far be it for me to, to argue with, with the man himself. But um, he did have like, you know, uh, flangers. He loved flange uh, pedals as well. You can hear him using it on stuff like Shadow Play and, and The Last of Independence. Um, there's so many kind of things but I say if you gave Rory Gallagher an AC30 a troll booster and he's 61 strat he'd be very happy you know he wouldn't that is Rory Gallagher at the end of the day so um, but like I say you know the man was a the man was a genius as far as I can say Rory really was and it, it, it's sad how kind of overlooked he is sometimes and um, I feel that he doesn't quite get the res the, uh, the the notoriety and respect he deserves sometimes because he was way ahead of his time. Rory was, and he stayed true to himself all the way to the end as well, which you just can't knock. The integrity of Rory Gallagher is incredible, absolutely incredible, and I've got nothing but respect for the man, and I absolutely love the man, and he's a massive influence on me, guitar-wise and singing wise as well i like to sing like rory gallagher i just love his singing style I always have so um so yeah so that's just you know quickly touched on some of his gear you know a couple of little techniques in this side and the other and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed this introduction lesson on uh, how to play like rory gallagher we're finally there everybody we've finally made it and um yeah and i'll see you again very soon for another video so uh, have a great morning afternoon and evening and i'll see you again and uh, goodbye now